All right, I'm um, gonna call the Northampton License Commission meeting for uh, August 4th uh, to order. And uh, the commissioners that are present are Brian Campidelli, Natasha Yakolev, and Helen Kahn. We are audio and visually recording. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, ask if there's any public comment. I don't know if everybody can hear. Is there any public comment? If not, then we'll move on. Um, I, I do see one hand. JJ, JJ Saverin, John. Yep. Oh, go, go ahead. Can you just state your name for the record before you start. John, you're you're uh, muted and no one can hear you. So there we go. I'm back. There we go. You need to state your name for the record. John Newman. What can we do for you? Uh, what's the policy or process of the public comment part of the agenda? What can I discuss? Honestly, uh, I don't know because I don't think I've ever had one, anyone jump on. Yeah. In all the years that I've. <clears throat> for. For Robert's rules, public comment is for citizens to provide input, but not for the commission committee or board to engage. And there should, there's in many cases time for that as well. Okay, uh, just public comment, I guess. Um, I went downtown <clears throat> last week to uh, Summer on Strong and uh, had a wonderful experience down there. Uh, walked around the corner, to get my car and uh, walked around to Spoleto's and uh, they had live music down there and it was fantastic. As a matter of fact, it was so good that we stayed. There was uh, four of us. We spent like $150 at the table unexpectedly. We just had a great time. It was a great environment, great atmosphere. And uh, I think live music is good for the town, good for all parts of Northampton. And I think that, uh, you know, what happened in Florence is unfortunate. I think that it should be taken into consideration by the board to somehow figure out another way to uh, accommodate all the businesses uh, to make it more even uh, for everybody. So I think um, just my own personal experience, it was, a, it, was a great, it was a great experience of all the places I've seen. And I just think that um, it, it could, should continue citywide and that includes uh, Florence. I agree. So. All right. While I have you too, I'll let you know, um, where'd he go? I'm here, I'm here. Oh, yeah, we did receive the letter, and I believe all of us uh, read that as well. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Okay, at this time, anybody else with public comment? All right. Um, number three, application for new entertainment license. One Bridge Street LLC DBA Spoleto Restaurant. Local bands with amplifiers at a very low volume. Um, who's here representing? I am. My name is Sophia Robon. I'm the manager at Spoleto. Hi, Sophia. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your setup? What your plan? Uh, so we have a large <clears throat> patio that we have developed uh, since the uh, the end of quarantine last year, and uh, it is um, part of it is covered and has a temporary um, bar area. Another part is covered by just like a pop up tent. Uh, and um, it's very large. I'm not sure if you're familiar with our lot. It's a large space right on the corner of Bridge and Holly. Uh, and um, we, uh, <clears throat> the band uh, is on our patio and we run an extension cord from uh, the restaurant. Okay. <clears throat> Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? Yeah, sorry, I'm going through, I'm trying, I know I read the application and I'm just trying to find it again, but um, to my recollection, it was very specific, is that right? I think it may have said a specific band on Wednesdays at a specific time, or am I misremembering? I'm, I'm... Yes, um, so from uh, the proposed time is uh, 5.30 to 8.30. Um, the band is their local band. Uh, they live right in Northampton. Uh, their name is Weege and the Wonder Twins. They recently released an album. Mm -hmm. uh, and they do uh, they do some original music and they do classic rock covers. Um, 
and uh, they are known to the area. They perform uh, here a lot. And we ideally, we want them um, under our covered tent uh, to both um, create some space between guests and them and uh, to um, uh, get, protect them as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's my understanding, it sounds like they've played already, <laughs> that they they've have. been playing there. And so just to clarify, because this does keep happening, I know it's new for everyone. So now you're sort of coming to us after the fact for an outdoor, to extend your entertainment license to the outdoor. Yes. That's correct. Okay. Um, so did you? I, I, and I will just say, I know there's been a lot of confusion because we've been, you know, we've been licensing these outdoor premises um, during the pandemic. And so understandable that I know people are playing, assuming that their entertainment license covers that. And then I guess at some point you heard that we actually need a separate license for that. Right? Yeah, I was, I was made aware of the fact that we needed a separate license about a month ago by our bookkeeper. I'm new in my position. Um, so, uh, but yeah, once I found out, I, you know, wrote up the application. Okay. And that they played, how many times have they played so far? Or I think three or four. Have you, are you aware of any sort of complaints or anything from anyone about the music? No, okay. we've had absolutely no complaints. Okay, all right. Um. How close to the nearest neighbors? Uh, so right next door, there is a residential building. Uh, it's probably about 150, 200 feet. And then uh, across the street from us uh, is both it's businesses with um, apartments above them. So it's uh, The Roost, uh, Nourish Cafe, and uh, I think it's called, it's an antique shop of some kind. Um, and those are all at least, a, I'd say a couple hundred feet. And then um, there's some new construction work beginning on Hall, well, that's been going on on Holly across the street. Uh, and then after that, there's residential homes, probably several hundred feet. Yeah, it must be pretty safe to say all those residences understand that they live downtown and loud noises is part of what comes with it, I would imagine. Yeah, good. That's great that you have uh, no complaints. Any other questions? I just have a question just to follow up. Helen um, asked, mentioned there were some specifics in the application. So this is just for Wednesdays from 530 to 830 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Thank you. No other questions? I have one, Brian. Um, so it sounded like John had said that he went downtown this weekend and heard music? Yeah, that's what I heard too. I was just about to address that. OK. <clears throat> uh, I can tell you we did not have live music. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday oh. with something. Oh, OK. Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right, thank you, John. <laughs> All right, somebody, uh, if we don't have any other questions regarding that, somebody want to make a motion? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new entertainment license at One Bridge Street LLC DBA Spoleto Restaurant um, as detailed in item three of the agenda. Is I'll there a number of days and hours? What? What do you mean? In there, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't have anything written on that um, on, on the agenda as far as if it's seven days. Right. But on the, uh, sorry, on the application itself, it has that that detail. Yeah, I just don't. Don't we have to state that? If I mean Helen's approving the application, which says that yeah. it's Wednesdays from five thirty to eight thirty, so I I think that's sufficient. I think we lost Brian unless he's sleeping. <laughs> Brian, you've frozen up on us, sir. Oh, there you are. I think. Okay. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, everybody. Are, I must have froze, but everyone, all of you froze on me, so <laughs> it must be me. Um, okay. So second. I'll second the motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, just a quick roll call. Uh, Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yeah. Thank you. Number four, application for new entertainment license. Lilo Inc. DBA Eastside Grill, 19 Strong Ave, music for Summer on Strong. Hello, can you state your name for the record? 
Deborah Flynn. Hi, Deborah. Hello. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing, or is it the music sure. that's already there? Music that is uh, already here. Um, when we applied for Summer on Strong, we had told the commission that it was Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Wednesdays and Thursdays from five to eight. Sundays from three to six. Uh, the musicians play in a pergola, which is like in the middle of the of Strong Avenue, and um, that's that's about it. Okay. Have you done music all three of those nights? That is correct. Consistently? Um, the only time we have not had music is when it rained. Okay. okay. And have you um, heard anything from neighbors about the? Just one, just one gentleman. Uh, he came over last week. He said that he loved the project, that he loves the music. If we could just um, tone down Wednesday nights a little bit, he'd be very appreciative. And we said yes. Great. So that, have you, sorry, was that, have you had a Wednesday night since then um, of music or was that this last Wednesday? This past Wednesday. So tonight will be the first night. Okay. And what is your, your um, plan to tone it down? Are you changing the style of music? The, uh, um, um, unfortunately, Wednesday nights is the Green Street Trio. So I have talking, I've talked to their band leader and he's assured me that they will just tone down the, the um, uh, amplifier. So there's a volume on the amplifier that you can actually manipulate and turn that, down or turn that up? That is correct, yes. Oh, who knew? Okay. Um, Deb? You said Wednesday from five to eight, Sunday from three to six, and was there another day? Thursdays, five to eight. Thursdays, five to eight. Has there been any other music there on weekends? There has been um, uh, this Ananda who owns the jewelry store on the same side as um, East Side. Her father plays from like 12 to two. He played 12 to two on two Sundays. I mean, it's not, it has nothing to do with Summer on Strong. He really, 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 really wanted to play. So he just sets up and he plays. It has nothing to do with anybody. He just wanted, he wants to do it. Okay. There's, there's no more money for any musicians. That's, that's why it's only Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. I got gotcha. you. Where does he play? In the pergola. Oh, he does, okay. So, I mean, it would be just like anybody setting up in front of Thorns Market and going to town with their saxophone or banjo or keyboard or whatever, right? That's exactly true. But right. in this case, they're supposed to have a permit from the DPW. Yeah, yeah busker's <laughs> permit. Yeah. And they're supposed to only play at certain locations downtown. But there's nobody, nobody oversees it or polices it. And Unless that's, it's, right. And that's. Yeah. That's also, it's not part of your application, so. Right. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? I don't have questions. Somebody want to make a motion? I will make a motion to approve the um, application for a new entertainment license for Lilo Incorporated DBA Eastside Grill at 19 Strong Al for the music for Summer on Strong event for Wednesdays and Thursdays, 5 to 8 p.m. and Sundays, 3 to 6 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Quick roll call, Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, item number five, public hearing on application for change of license category on annual wine and malt restaurant license. Uh, Wash It and Wear, Inc., DBA Jake's Restaurant, 17 King Street, request for a cordial and liqueur permit. And who's here uh, representing? Yeah, uh, Alex Wash It with uh, Jake's Restaurant. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Great. Um, do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, I mean, simply, uh, we just want to expand our offerings, um, you know, in the, 
really only available way which we can, which would be through a, the addition of the cordial license, seeing as uh, you know, expansion to a full alcohol license obviously is not available or possible at this time. So, um, yeah, it's uh, we're still pretty limited, only open Wednesday through Sunday. Well, yeah, we're only open five days a week now, as opposed to seven before the pandemic. And uh, we're looking just to generate any additional sales that we can with the business that we have. Um, and so the cordial license would be uh, the most responsible uh, and practical way at this time. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a motion to open the public hearing. A second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. So. Just make sure, just ask and make sure there's any public comment. Yeah. I'm just reading your notes. Um, all right. Is there any public comment regarding this um, item number five? Okay, none. Um, you're familiar with the laws? Yes, yeah, certainly. Okay. On the cordial license. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions? I don't have questions. I would just reiterate what we've been doing when people come forward for cordial licenses, which is just to make sure that you're aware of what a cordial actually is, that the, the bottle has to say cordial or liqueur on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sure that the sugar content is accurate right yeah absolutely we've been working closely with our providers uh, horizon beverage being one of them uh to ensure that we're you know purchasing the correct items uh, for that so using their guidance on that. all right Andy, we don't have to um we close the public hearing and then discuss and then make our uh Yes. Make our motion. Yeah. Does anything have anybody have Helen or Natasha have anything to add during the, the public hearing here? No, I do not. No. Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, any uh, other questions or statements regarding this? I don't. I think it's nice to see people coming forward to access the opportunity though. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, and I was going to address after the, the hearing was over exactly what Natasha was saying. So just make sure there's no confusion whatsoever on labels and whatnot. Yeah, Other certainly. I appreciate okay. that. Yeah, no worries. Um, somebody want to make a motion on this? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for change of license category on an annual wine and malt restaurant license for Washington and Ware Inc. BBA Jake's Restaurant. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. All right, item six, public hearing on application for alteration of premises on annual all alcohol restaurant license, Notch 8, Inc., DBA Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Platform Bar, the deck, 125A Pleasant Street, adding 4,180 square feet of outdoor space. Um, who's here to represent? Uh, it's Jeremiah Mecca, Notch 8, Hi, Inc. Hello. How are we doing today? Good, how are you? Good, I apologize for the video. I'm, uh, I'm on the road right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm looking to do is um, I want to extend our seating that we um, were temporarily extended for COVID. So it comes into the parking lot. We don't lose any additional spaces. I've already put up the Jersey barriers to uh, ensure safety. Purchased the tent and it adds about 125 seats to our outdoor deck dining. Right. Annie, his That's explanation kind of doesn't have to be under. Sorry. His uh, his explanation, his uh, explanation of um, what he's trying to do doesn't need to be under public hearing, correct? No, it's just you just have just to open debate. the public hearing it's for just, public comment. For public comment, yeah. All right. Um. So you've already met, Jer um, Jeremiah. You've already met with um, DPW and such. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've talked with uh, the building inspector. Well, not the building inspector, but plumbing inspector. There was a question on number of bathrooms to extend the extra 125 seats. I sent them all the information. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was going to cross-reference it. He said he was going to get it back to me. I haven't seen another email, and I didn't get a hold of him today. Um, but uh, talking to my own licensed plumber, it sounded like we had plenty of uh, plumbing and plenty of uh, facilities to, to accommodate. Yeah, you're breaking up pretty bad. Uh, yeah, that's why I didn't do the video. I'm, up, I'm out on the road here. Sorry about that. Can you hear me better now? Or? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. I talk, it's fine. So we talked to the plumbing inspector and I haven't heard back from him is the gist of it. I talked to my own licensed plumber and it sounded like we had enough facilities, but I, the official word would have to come from him, the inspector. Okay. And Annie, I think Annie tried to reach him too. I'm not sure if she had any success. Yes. So I tried to reach him with no success. Um, there's also additional issues with the planning board um, about certain um, areas of the premises that encroach onto Article 97, which is parkland. Um, There's also, which um, I just found out, there's an issue with part of the train station project from MassDOT was they needed to connect um, a handicap an ADA accessible walkway from the train station to the bike path. And the way they did it, um, it kind of like, it goes, it's kind of hard to explain, but the area that um, is looking to be approved actually blocks that ADA access. Um, And I've had, I had conversations with the planning department for the majority of the day. And unfortunately it was last minute because everyone was on vacation. Um, but there's some issues that they need to iron out before they would like to see this be approved. Um, also because there's, there's a lot of issues. Um, I did talk to Jeremiah about them today and the day before. Um, I went up there about an hour ago and took a bunch of pictures to send to Attorney Seawald and the planning department. Um, so my suggestion is because that uh, Jeremiah has already temporarily been approved this area, um, my suggestion is to move this application to the September agenda so that these issues can be ironed out since he already has a pr- temporary approval of the area. So it's not like there's going to be a month of not having this area be utilized by patrons. Um, yeah, I, I knew about the, uh, the deck, but I didn't hear anything about the ADA until right now. So I wasn't able to address any of those if it was, whether it's restriping or anything else. So that's yeah, no, I know. There, so just, and just so people know, I'm not trying to put it out there without knowing that. So. No, 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 because I only, I only spoke to Jeremiah a few days about this. So it's all, it's all been within the past few days. So it's not like he hasn't been on top of it. Um, I'm trying to find, I don't know if a picture would help um, the commission or A, a picture of where it's encroaching is that yeah i can i'll i can show you um it basically might. where you're at it's where it's at right now isn't it yeah so the area Just looking that, to do it permanently yes but so the area can you see my screen yeah yes so the area that's circled in yellow is where the um the seating is right now so if you see on the right hand side of the photo, um, there it's, it might be a little hard to see, but there's um, a handicap accessible um, and a curb cut that goes all the way to in front of the white truck and then comes back in front of Union Station and then it goes all the way to the left of the bike path. 
Um, so can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay, so it starts here yeah. and then goes here and here and here. And that was um, a mass DOT part of the plan to make the area ADA accessible. Huh. So um, uh, I guess yeah. now. And I can, I can work with them because the space that's extended out there covers like um, closest to the building and from the building out. But that walkway that cuts, that's right in front of the uh, tent, the one that's out into the parking lot. So just extending those lines straight back to the uh, built or back to the train station, um, I'm sure it would suffice. And I can work with those guys on getting that done for next for uh, you know next month's meeting. Like I said, I didn't I didn't even know about it. So. Yeah, right. I, I don't, I guess I don't understand what you mean. Who would you work with? Mass DOT? Yeah, I, I've been working with Mass DOT. This whole train project was dropped in my lap. It hasn't been something that anybody else has worked with except for myself. Um, so I'll work with Mass DOT in getting the ADA set up in our parking lot for their train station. Um, and I'm sure the city would have to approve it, but that was all approved by the state um, inspector or state ADA. Mm -hmm. um, so I would start with them. I have my contacts there and work out a plan and then figure it out and resubmit it to you guys. I'm in no crazy rush. I just wanted to be ahead of the game so I can prepare for next year, whether I'm gonna have more tables or not and get things kind of situated. Yeah, and since you've already been temporarily approved, it's not gonna hinder your ability to have guests out there for the time being. Yeah. Yeah, so I have no problem making uh, the changes and then resubmitting for next for next meeting. Okay, and you honestly don't really necessarily need to resubmit everything because you've already paid for the legal notice. Um, so you would just need to just provide additional supporting docs. That would be yeah, yeah, I don't mean to waste anybody's time. Like I said, I had no idea, so. So, Annie, at this point, I guess, one, do we need to open a public hearing and, and or <laughs> two, um, would Not it, if we're gonna table. Motion, yeah, would it just be a motion to table? Is, or do we need a motion to table or till the next meeting? Um, just to be safe, since it was advertised as a public hearing, um, it would be, it would probably just, it. it would just, it would be great to open it and then close it and, and then then a motion to table, if that makes sense. Okay. Yep. So um, motion open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any public comment on this at all at this time? All right, seeing none, um, gonna close the public hearing. A motion to close. Second. <laughs> yep. Second, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, can we get a motion to table this until the next meeting? I'll make a motion to table this application until the September meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, just a quick roll call. Aye. Um, Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. And who seconded? Sorry. I believe I did. You did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, um, Jeremiah. We'll talk. Thank you. Soon. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. No worries. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. See ya. See ya. Number seven, application. No, we lost you, Brian. Three twenty Riverside Drive, Saturday. State your name, please, for the record. O'Brien Tomlin. Thanks, O'Brien. Good to see you. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about what you got going on. 
Uh, we're just doing a uh, another special beer release. Uh, our, uh, hopefully, both of our doubles will be ready by then. A hazy double and a new a West Coast style double. Uh, same deal, twenty by forty ten, uh, wrapped with uh, snow fencing, uh, one way in, uh, five picnic tables, couple of high tops, um, and we'll have food available. Um, so great. Twelve to eight. All right. You're going to have music or anything? Uh, no, last time, uh, the one we just did, I actually set up a uh, turntable with uh, some records and just <laughs> kind of played some old vinyl. Uh, no no live entertainment, though. Okay, great. Um, Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? I do not. I don't. Would someone like to make a motion? Yes, so I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license uh, for Building 8 Brewing at 320 Riverside Drive as detailed in item seven of the agenda. A second. All in favor? Aye. Is that, it did, she didn't say liquor, that's okay? Uh, it's supposed to be uh, the wine and malt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a minute there, you were like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's just called it. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah it's just the standard is of the short-term liquor license. Okay, that's but fine. yeah, the details. Yeah, didn't the want details. to get you guys in trouble. Right. Thank you. No, the details. <laughs> like, yeah. Wine and malt. Yeah. yeah <laughs> malt. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brian. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I just get a roll call, Brian? Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Thank you. Number eight, application for short-term liquor licenses, drawing board, brewing, company. You lost your... Oh, there you go. Me first, to the 8th, 2021, 3 to 10 p.m., pouring event, wine and malt. Can uh, somebody that represents? Yes, Corey Learn from Drawing Board Brewing Company. Hi, right, Corey. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you tell us a little bit about what you got going, what you got going here. Yeah, we're uh, in response to some customer feedback. We are looking to do a couple short-term pouring, pouring events so people can try our beer um, before committing to buying four packs. Uh, we'll have two uh, controlled access points in our back patio. We'll be all outside, um, and we'll be playing uh, soft music. Uh, no okay. live music. There. Okay. And you said controlled entrance and exit? Correct. Okay. So we have um, a staircase coming up from the grass alleyway um, that has that already has an existing fence and we'll be putting up a temporary fence towards our parking lot. So there could be two directions that people could be coming from. Okay. All right. Uh, Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Um, I, just because we've had a lot of talk about music, <laughs> I just don't know, typically, um, typically I wouldn't even think about it, but um, do we need to state anything about the music being played? I know you're saying- It's that you're not saying live entertainment. It's like recording. Okay, so that is not under our purview. We don't need to worry about that. Correct. Okay. All right. No, from what I, I understand, we we don't govern uh, radios and record players and so on. So. Okay. Just wanted to check. Yep. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any other? If not, can someone make a motion, please? Sure. I will make a motion to approve the application for short-term. Liquor licenses for Drawing Board Brewing Company, LLC, 36 Main Street in Florence for Saturdays, August 21st and 28th from 3 to 10 p.m. for a pouring event. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay. Uh, number nine. Application for new entertainment license, AC Fair LLC DBA, uh, Patriot 150 Main Street Live Entertainment with DJs until 1 a.m. Is there somebody here representing? I am. 
Can you state your name for the record, please? My name is Amanda Risling. I'm the general manager here at Patria. Hi, Amanda. Can, hi. Uh, hi. Can you tell us a little bit about what you are planning? So the thought is to utilize the, um, the space that was granted to us, the additional uh, space on the sort of um, outdoor plaza for COVID, which we were using last year as um, seating, um, the, to use it um, to encourage people to be, you know, to, to use it in a different way. So um, uh, we could use it for a live jazz. We were uh, been talking to some DJs about having people out there, um, sort of like giving them a space to dance. Um, and uh, we talked about having something available for New Year's Eve or a place to, for people to watch the fireworks, but it would be in the space that is, um, we have the, the fences that would define where they could be. This is outside in front of your, your uh, location? In the plaza behind the restaurant, is that? Oh, you've frozen, Amanda. Give her a minute, I guess. Amanda, can you hear us? No, oh, I think we lost her. So just table it until, you know, move on. What do you think, Annie? Um, I mean, I'd hate to get into the next agenda item and then have her come back and wait, have to wait. I mean, I just want to ask her questions about the people that live above well, and such. Oh, wait, hold on. She's, she's coming back. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. No worries. Um, you were in the middle of discussing where you were going to be located and how it was going to go. Um, so uh, we ha it's that on the, uh, the extended seating that we were granted during COVID. Um, so it is it is fenced off. So um, it would give people a place to um, move from the bar inside into to the outdoor seating, um, but they couldn't move outside of there. And we would have potentially live entertainment and DJs and and make space for dancing. Or um, we've also talked about um, having available on New Year's Eve to watch the fireworks. And the DJs and entertainment would be located outside? Mm hmm Okay. How, can you remind us how big that space is? I actually was trying to look for it in our licensing. I can't find exactly how, it was, it's pretty large. Um, I know we had eight tables out there last year. So there was 32 seats. Okay. I can see if uh, the owner's here and he can tell me exactly how, what exactly the, the, the parameters of it were. And how close exactly is uh, that area to residential housing? As far as I know, there's not any apartments. There's none above us in Thorns. There's none. We have the parking garage right there. And everything else, um, I don't think there's any residences immediately um, that are nearby. Above Osaka, the whole second floor of that building, the, I think, I forget the name of that building, but those are apartments. Mm -hmm. And those are up the, all the way up the alleyway on the opposite side from us. Right, sure. Just trying to set so that yep. the commission is aware of where the housing is. So there's apartments up there. There's um, around I think the there maybe some on the other side of the parking garage as well. Yep, next to Joe Ryan's garage. Yep. Uh, there's a salon on the first floor and the upstairs are apartments there. Mm -hmm. Right, and then straight across the parking lot, there's that whole row of housing, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yep. then mm -hmm. the other oh, yeah. on Main Street. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the floor doesn't have any residential on the top floor, but the immediately adjacent buildings do, but they it might not even be up until the third floor, and in fact, even a little bit further down the block. Yeah. And this would be amplified en entertainment? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, and how many nights are you proposing? Um, I think that we would probably be uh, oh, maybe once a month. Um, but would not be, it would certainly would not be every weekend. 
Yeah, I misplaced the email that had your application, so yeah. I couldn't print yeah. it. Annie, do you have the information on what, yeah. what it I actually have, says? Oh, sorry. Annie, could, um, I'm looking at it, I think, right now. So it does say uh, um, on this, it says live entertainment, disc jockeys, dancing on the patio at Patria and, and the outdoor area covered by our current license from 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. Wednesday through Saturday. Yes. So there isn't mm -hmm. any sort of limit. On it. Right, we just we want to be able to be able to plan things so that we could, um, you know, sort of have our bases covered. Should we want to? Right now, we have nothing planned. Right. Um. So I well, I have a few questions, but one is, um, so we're talking about this um, being in the area that you were um, given additional seating related mm -hmm. to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I believe that that is limited in terms of the season, right? Annie, doesn't it, it extends to, I, I don't even know. When. Yeah, it will expire in November. Yeah, because I know that, because okay. you were mentioning about the New Year's Eve. So, I thought, Annie, Annie and I had talked, I thought she said it had been extended till April, but I could be incorrect. Is that, so is it a year round, Annie, or do you know? Um, I, I, yeah, I thought it was outdoor seasonal sort of thing because when winter is well, it, it, it's really it was really dependent on covid yeah. um I, i'd have to double check it's either november or april 2022 okay it would be november i'm sorry it is november alan that's i i thought so okay. yeah i think that the, the open meeting laws extend you know this Oh, you know, virtual meeting is extended till uh, April. That uh, might be what you were thinking about. Okay, understood. Um, I'm going to say um, that I, um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this application as, as it's written. Um, it sort of opens up the door for, if you want it, if we were to approve this, then it's like from Wednesday through Saturday, you could be having dance parties until one. <laughs> AM, which I know you're saying is not your intent. That's not our intent, but I understand why. You right. Yeah. And just because you may or may not know that we, this is sort of new ground that we're covering with these outdoor, yeah. allowing music outdoors as mm -hmm. part of a business. I know there's sort of the separate outdoor music events, which are music events that are right. outdoor. I'm Absolutely. getting concerned that we're now gravitating into this different territory where a business can have, be also like a, a dance place. You know, a restaurant now becomes like a, place for dance and entertainment outdoors. I'm personally also concerned about the hours of it because there are residences that the idea, you know, these other outdoor music permits that we have uh, or licenses that we've granted have a cutoff time of, I think like 8.30 might be the latest one right now that we have out and possibly nine. So right. I'm, I'm saying all that out loud for a discussion, I guess. <laughs> um, and, and I don't know how others, yeah. um. I remember when we, um, before Homestead was Homestead and it was seven strong, they had a DJ and granted it was inside, but they had a, um, an entertainment license to do it until 1 a.m. and it was a big problem. Okay. Even yeah. Was, was yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it, it, it did sort of shift it from like a, a restaurant with posted business hours to then a bar scene after those business hours. Yes. Um, so, but I would agree with Helen just to get in terms of our need to be cautious and thorough with the hours and the days that we're approving from the outset so that we don't end up having to backtrack and have of course. difficult conversations later. Um, but I would suggest certainly um, maybe starting at 6 p.m. because let businesses get until the 5 p.m. point and close. Oh and that sort of thing yes, of um and then i'm really not sure what to what what to do about the cutoff time so i'm curious to hear what the other commissioners have to say about the 1 a.m mm -hmm. yeah oh. i will admit i initially when i read the application i didn't even realize it was outside i didn't read the fine print mm -hmm. i was and even i was having right. concerns with it inside because <laughs> right. i know sound can travel in weird ways so this is, I mean, we need to be honest if there's any music being played in that plaza with um, amplification, it's definitely gonna travel. Um, um, even if you, you know, especially if it's sort of like a DJ dance party. Right. 
as I, I mean, I know that we put in the application basically for our business hours. The intention is to do this, um, you know, on isolated days. I, as I said, if we only have the, it's till November, it, there would maybe be two days. Right. And so, they would be, it would be like a, a, a set, probably a Saturday. Yeah. Right. As far as a license being granted, I mean, kind of held to the point where I think what you've done for one, you have to do for all. I mean, you know, if you're allowing in the same kind of stipulation, you're allowing businesses to have their entertainment, um, you know, I think it's got to be across the board or else it could be issues. Um, yeah, the, the other licenses, as I stated, I think stop at 8.30. I think they were very specific on specific days and I think it went as late as 8.30. So this is, in my opinion, a very different type of license that we'd be granting. Mm -hmm. uh, I am wondering, and I certainly, just so you know, we all are, you know, supporters of business. <laughs> we want to do what we can to support business. We just don't want to create conflict, you know, mm -hmm. for your business with neighbors and things like that um, and go down that slippery slope. slope. Um, right. I, I am wondering um, what the protocol is, if it makes sense to actually um, figure out what those specific days are. Okay. And, then, and Annie, maybe you can help with this. And then have an application that says we are having these special events on these nights and then that's something that could also like neighbors could be alerted uh -huh. you know, um to say like yeah these are like these two events we're having um for whatever reason and this is the hours of it um and i don't know if that historically you know traditionally if that's something that makes sense to i would be happy that to if, that, if that makes sense yeah. right I don't know, Annie, if you have input on that or, or if Brian or Natasha, you do. Oh, you don't want my input. Okay. <laughs> well, you are part of the commission, so we do. While you're well, all right. I mean, honestly, you know, it, it almost just seems like we should go back 20, 25, 30 years back when you had an entertainment license, you had an entertainment license. And the people that chose to live within the sound and the bars, they had to deal with it or they moved, you know, so... Um, this stipulation, the way this license commission, it seems like it's kind of molding and morphing into all these little details for each and every license. Uh, I think it's just got to be a broader spectrum. And I mean, I'm glad Alan's here. Maybe he can weigh in on that. But I think if we're going to start, you know, slicing the pie a thousand different times, it's just going to create more um, heartache and work for everybody. It, it just, um, I'm sorry, if you live close and you can't stand the music, you know, you just you deal. I mean, if it's back in the day, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there was loud music, the police were called, the police showed up and it was their deal saying, turn down the music. If we come back again, you're going to turn it off. Right. So I don't know. So Brian, yeah. Sorry. You know, that's my opinion. If she's going to, if she has business hours and she's putting in just to be able to cover and um, want to do things, you know, um, back to last meeting, this, Natasha's words, we are here to manage these licenses in a way. So if it becomes some kind of really big issue, I guess it could be addressed. And I'm not saying that I want you to have one o'clock, you know, a DJ out in your, you know, back deck and, and everybody's miserable. That's not the point. But the point is, um, you know, how much governing are we going to do to where we slice this down to nothing? I mean, just business is hard enough, you know, so, and I mean, across the board for everyone. So I would say, you know, people that are in business applying for these licenses, um, they have or should have enough common sense to understand how to run their facility properly to not have the police show up and, and tell them that, you know, people know when you're being loud, when you're shaking a building, when, you know what I mean? I mean, there've, I've been to some indoor places where it's just ridiculous you know so um you know if you want to do entertainment and you want to have your clients be happy and show up and and you guys make money i mean that's the name of the game right everybody's trying to make money and uh create a nice business and atmosphere for the downtown so um that's my opinion you guys can weigh in on that or not but i just think just over governing everything because a couple of people have an issue is wrong so um i think I, two things um 
I don't think we should be managing licenses. I just think if we're issuing licenses, we're responsible for what is happening and how they're using and being used and to speak to that. Um, I agree with you, Brian. I don't think that this pie should be getting sliced and so that everything becomes something we have to manage, but what we do have to provide is consistency. And I don't think that we've provided consistency because we, be in, the, in the last year during COVID, we have been inundated with out, you know, eating outdoors, carrying alcohol across the sidewalk, outdoor entertainment licenses, all of these things. And, um, and I think we have to be consistent in how we're uh, approving licenses. And I don't think that we always have been. So if there are a lot of questions and if there are concerns about like, well, we don't wanna leave it too broad because we know if it's too broad, we're gonna to have to walk it back later if there's constant complaints about it. So, you know, I, I appreciate uh, the applications that come in and certainly the patience of the applicants while we have these conversations, but I don't, I just think it's about consistency. And I think it would be awesome for Patrick to have outdoor entertainment. I don't know that it is prudent to issue a license to the broad extent that the application is asking for. And because you've said that the application, that you're not in, you know, you're not going to be using every single one of those sites. You just want the flexibility, totally understand that. So how can we figure out a way to issue it that allows for the flexibility, but also um, speaks to the frequency of it? I think that's, that would be a happy end goal. So, I'm realizing, I think we've lost Brian during oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's a coincidence. Right, so I don't know in terms of protocol, let's do meetings if we need to wait for him to come back on. Um, so, Annie, is it okay if I continue to ask questions even though Brian's not here, we have quorum? Yeah, okay. Um, so you had said you probably just do it like a couple times a month, would it be, would it feel okay to you if, if a license, if we just, if we issue a license for once a week? Yes, that would be fine. Absolutely and fine. If you didn't do it, then, you know, you you don't do it. If you do it, you do, but it's within what's been discussed and approved. Yeah. So I need you to, I need you to ask uh, or repeat what I missed, please. I don't sure. know why. So, I, sure don't. I don't know what the last thing you heard was, but. You said uh, um, we don't want to cut everything to where we're slicing the pie a million times. Right. Um, I just think we should be consistent. And because we've been, we've had so many people come forward in the last year during COVID, we're, we're issuing so many more of the same types of licenses with frequency <laughs> before. And I don't know that we're always consistent about it. So I think, I, I agree. I, I don't think we should be micromanaging things, but I do think that we should be consistent and we should have some standards by which that we're doing things and, and, and identify what's within our purview and what isn't within our purview. Right. But I mean, my point was a standard. There's a law. And if everybody that applies for this entertainment license is within the law, then it's our duty to actually grant that license. And then the police handle it from there. And then if it becomes an issue with the police and they bring it to our attention, then we handle it. You know, I mean, petitions and people complaining. I'm sorry. The, you know, I just don't want to get into it. Uh, with every single uh, business out here, the problem is we allow it once and then it just opens the floodgates and it should be a standard. So we're setting a precedent that's not right in my opinion, so. So I just asked Amanda, since she had said that they didn't anticipate using the license many several times in the between now and November when they have the outdoor seating. So I asked her if it would be if it would make sense to her, if they already know they don't plan on using it that consistently, if we approved a license for one night a week, would that be acceptable to her? And she gave an affirmative that that would work. Yeah, whatever license she wants, in my opinion, you know, that's fine. If you want one night a week? One night a week would be great. Um, I just wanna follow up a little bit. Um, Brian, just to point out, I think a big difference here, um, and I have not been on the commission as long as you have, is that now we are into the territory of outdoor entertainment licenses. And it's my understanding that that is new. That is very new um, as of the pandemic. So so that I think is the difference when you say like, oh, we're doing things differently than we were. In my opinion, it's because yeah, now things are moving outdoors, which is sort of a whole new game. So anyway. Um, I just wanted to say that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
so um, it's going to be one night a week till um, all the same parameters till 1 a.m.? Yep. Okay. And is it a one night a week your choice or is it a Wednesday or specific day? I mean, what are you doing? Um, I would say probably a Saturday. Saturday. It would be on Saturday and whether we, we would either we would either do it on Saturday or we would not do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if somebody wants to put a motion, uh, is there any other questions or statements regarding this? Helen or Natasha? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if this is something that we're approving, I didn't know, Annie, if this means, um, do we state specifically what the amendments are, or is this something, okay, that we can... Just state that, what, you're, what you're approving. Okay, and then I thought I had a follow-up, but go ahead, Natasha, because I can't remember. Um, I just wanted to say to Amanda, since this is your first time coming to license mission for this type of license, and because it is a relatively new thing for us. I think it's important for applicants to know that the licenses are always subject to review and further discussion if there's any complaints brought forward by anybody. Of course. And that was what my second, thank you, Natasha, because that was the second thing I had to say. Um, just one thing, when you approve it, can you just put the expiration date of November? Is there a where in November is it? Was um, it? It's either the first or the fifteenth. Um, so essentially, an expiration date that coincides with the expiration of the outdoor seating license. Of the outdoor, the temporary outdoor liquor license. Oh, okay. Um, and oh, let's. I think I mentioned this. Amanda, but just, you know, for your sake and our sake, um, you had said like there is some kind of roping or something. So yeah. folks, for example, um, couldn't say there's a party I'm going to join, but not be part, you know, not have to come. Oh, no. restaurant. Oh, they have to come through your restaurant. Yeah. They would have to come through our restaurant, in which case there would be a door person right. um, uh, checking IDs um, and making sure that people um, stay within the parameters. Great. And for your sake as well, because I don't want people just jumping the rope and joining your party for free. Me neither. <laughs> we're, we're trying to help you help your business. This is like <laughs> directing the Oasis. I don't know if anybody remembers that club that used to be <laughs> next to Patriot and Thorns. Oh, no. Time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, somebody want to make a motion? Sure. I will uh, make a motion to approve the application for new entertainment license with amendments for AC Fair LLC DBA. Is it Patria or Patria? Patria. Patria, uh, Patria at 150 Main Street for live entertainment with DJs for um, Saturday nights from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m through the expiration of the temporary outdoor liquor license in November. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Good luck. Very yeah. much. Thank you. Good luck. Item 10. Uh, discussion with Attorney Sewell and protocols for public meetings and public hearings. Hello, Attorney Sewell. How are you? Mr. Chair, I am just fine. How are you? Great. Thank you for joining us. I'm happy to do it. So um, let me just start off just so that we all understand what we're talking about. Um, a, a meeting is a, well, it used to be a what we called a corporal convening of members of a body. And the corporal part meant that you were all in the same room. You know, your bodies were in the same room, uh, but we don't do that anymore. So this is a convening of the members uh, during which there are deliberations. And that sort of is, the, those are the parameters of the open meeting law. And when you're holding a meeting, a meeting is generally a discussion among the members of the body on issues that are within the jurisdiction of the body. And so it's pretty simple. You're a three member uh, commission and a meeting is when you discuss among yourselves things that come up. Um, a hearing on the other hand, and let me just, before I say that, um, 
meetings are always controlled by the chair. The chair should always be recognizing speakers. Now, I know you're a small and informal commission, but as your meetings get larger and larger and more people are joining, it's really important that uh, there be you know, some level of decorum and that the way that happens is for the chair to control who is speaking and in what order. Um, no one has a right to speak ever at a meeting without being recognized by the chair. Um, and I know, that, and I'm, again, I'm just telling you what the formal requirements are. And I know you're a, a less formal, very small um, committee, but you know, there are some much larger committees and these rules apply you know, across the board, uh, whether you're a 15 member board and you can see that if everybody just chiming in whenever they want to, it could be a problem in a larger board. But, um, you know, Brian, as chair, you always have uh, control over uh, the deliberation. A hearing is when you take evidence from others. Okay? No one has a right to speak to the board um, in a meeting. But in a public hearing, uh, due process applies and the right to be heard the right to uh, have an impartial decision maker, all of the, those due process principles, um, the right to notice, the right to be heard, and the right to a decision by an impartial uh, decision maker are all fundamental requirements of due process and they apply to public hearings. They don't apply to public meetings. So when you have a hearing, like uh, presumably you were just having with Katria, that's an opportunity when Patria has a reasonable, uh, a right to reasonably address the commission on the uh, on its application. Uh, in a meeting, that person could watch, but really has no right to participate. Um, and when you get into a public hearing, uh, there really needs to be some structure. And the structure generally is, um, and you know, obviously Patria was. Uh, Patria, I, I don't remember. Patria, Patria. Uh, Patria uh, you know, that was simple because there was nobody else here to, to, to address you on, on the issue. But generally what's done is that the proponent, the applicant would make a presentation. Those who, and then however you like to do this, but typically those who support the application are given an opportunity to speak. Those who oppose it, those who are neutral about it, but want to put something on the record, um, all get a chance to speak. And it can't be that, uh, and when anyone addresses the commission, they address the commission. It's very important that people speak to you and not to each other. So you don't wanna have neighbors going back and forth, you know, yes, you did, no, I didn't, yes, you, no. They're talking to the commission. And it's very important for the for the chair to require that people speak to the commission and wait their turn so that when the person who's speaking is done, another person can speak in and um, and refute what was just said. But they just don't get the right to just do it. Okay? Everybody speaks to the commission, not to each other. Everybody speaks when they're recognized by the chair. At the end of a public hearing, when you're done taking in evidence, right, when you have all of the information that you think you need to make a decision, someone will make a motion that gets seconded and then um, a discussion will be had. Now you're back in kind of the meeting uh, uh, phase because no one has the right to address the commission during your discussion of the evidence you've heard in an effort to reach a decision. So again, that doesn't mean that you can't call on someone and say, now, did you say um, it was going to be in this part of your patio? Or did you say it was going to be a, just clarification? You're not asking for new evidence, you're asking for clarification. So it's very important that you've gotten the information, all of the evidence you need before the hearing is closed. Now, I didn't stop you, but you didn't close the hearing tonight. Okay? It, it, it didn't sound like anybody formally closed the hearing before voting. Well, that, that wasn't a public hearing. Oh, it wasn't. 
Yeah. No. Not oh. for Patria. We had public hearings earlier in the agenda. Oh, we did. And we did close. My question oh. back to that, while you while you're mentioning that, um, even in the meeting, you said you know to allow them to dress. So these are not like just that that example alone was not a public hearing. Are they supposed okay. to be? I don't know. I don't. I mean, they... I, I my I thought um, that there only needs to be a public hearing for an entertainment license if the commission were going to disapprove it because they, right. are, they have the right to have the entertainment. Is that right. okay? You've done a lot more with entertainment licenses than I have because I've just not really been asked that many times about entertainment licenses over the almost 40 years I've done this. But um, so um, now let me just speak to some of the things that were, you know, being cast around. Okay. Every hearing, every hearing stands on its own merits and is decided based on the information you've heard. And, and what you know okay, from that hearing. Now, obviously you're selected to, these, to this commission because you, you know, you're residents of Northampton um, and you know something about Northampton, you have an idea of sort of the culture of Northampton and you're able to uh, make decisions for Northampton. But your decision-making really is a balance, okay? You're not there to, uh, to uh, assist businesses, you're not there to assist neighbors. You're there to strike the balance between the, the needs and the rights of the business and the expectations of those who live around the business. And, you know, that's just, a, there are, there's this balancing to be done. And, you know, Brian, you might have one view of that balance and others might have a different view of that balance. Some of you might think that, you know, if you, uh, even though you live around downtown, that amplified music is inappropriate that close to residences. I mean, you both, you, uh, both of those viewpoints are valid viewpoints. Okay? Brian, you've articulated very well that you believe those who move into downtown have to deal with the noise. Okay? And others might view it differently. Um, you know, and uh, I think it was Helen, maybe I'm wrong, but pointed out this is something very new, outdoor amplified entertainment as a regular uh, feature of downtown businesses. It's not something that we've ever done before. So, I mean, you know, you, you can also argue, Brian, that, you know, even though people understand that downtown can be a noisy place, outdoor amplified music was never within you know their their understanding of what noise is in a downtown area so i mean there all of these arguments cut in both ways okay um and um so but the, you know, the, what so the point it, is circling back to you finding a good balance is what it's all about it's all it's what it's all you about know, but, but for instance I, but, you know like my argument last month was basically the real issue is volume with outdoor music not amplified unplugged plugged in blah 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 it's volume you know what i mean and that's you know so that's the basis that's what i was getting at too but well it's not just volume find it's, the balance it's also frequency okay because volume at low frequencies maybe have a different effect on people than volumes at high frequencies and I've dealt with all kinds of noise issues over the years, you know, being a land use lawyer, right. it's always an issue, you know, and, you know, the uh, volume coming from an electric guitar might be, uh, have a different effect on people than volume coming from a cello. Right, right. Just right. because the, the frequencies are different. So it's not true to say that noise is, every noise is the same and you can just, measure of volume yeah, that's a that's a good point because even you know like in my industry i get noise complaints lawnmower versus chainsaw two different things you know i mean they're still right. both loud but yeah the frequencies are really different are, are very different and yeah. so and and every situation is different the situation of jj's in florence is different than the situation with somebody who you know 
moved next to, I don't know, you know, moved above Packards. Um, it's different. Every situation is different and every situation has to be evaluated on its facts. And just because you've done something for after one hearing doesn't mean you have to do the exact same thing after another hearing. Every case rises and falls on its facts. And, you know, and if you find that you made an improvident decision and it, you know, and it turned into a problem, you don't have to make the same decision again. That doesn't mean that, you know, just because you made it in one place doesn't mean you have to make the same decision in another place because your experience and how that worked out could color the, your decision in the second case. Um, you know, taking into consideration sort of the similarities and the differences between the two applications. So, you know, that's generally the process. Um, and, you know, it's not an easy process. And there are some very important competing interests that you're being asked to balance, not only in, you know, in issue of liquor licenses and, and a whole bunch of other things that you do, but in these entertainment licenses, which are becoming more and more of an issue, um, you know, it's not an easy balance. So, I'm happy to take any questions that anybody has. I hope I addressed what you had hoped I was going to talk about. Just to, yeah, if I could, if we could kind of bullet, you know, the proper steps. Um, so I followed you a bit, you know, so we don't actually allow, like what we did tonight is we allowed, we, 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 um, we take like item number such and such, and it's a public hearing. And then we identify the person and we allow them to tell us a little bit about what they're doing. And then we open up the public mm -hmm. hearing and ask for public comment. No, so, no, no. The public hearing needs to be open before anybody gives you testimony. So, so the first that's what I was going to ask is yeah. you open the public hearing and take the testimony of the, the of the applicant. Okay, that's what Everything I was going to ask right off. after the public yeah. hearing opens. So I announce it off my item sheet, my agenda, and then open it immediately, and then ask what he has Somebody to say. Make some motion to open the hearing and. Yep. and a second okay. to vote. That's the Perfect. technical way to open a hearing. And then after we hear from that person and then any questions from only the public, then we close and then it's Helen, Natasha and my, our discussion with Correct. questions between ourselves. And then, right. and like you said, we can still address if we have a clarification or whatnot, but right. Right. they don't get a, another yeah. chance to speak uh, other but than I, that. I wanna emphasize before you close, make sure you have all of the information you need because you could say, well, listen, I don't have enough information here. Uh, I think you really need to come back at the next meeting and provide us the following information. Um, or, um, but you don't wanna close the hearing and then realize, oh, we didn't get a whole bunch of information that's really important and that we really need. You wanna make sure not to rush through the hearing and make sure that you have all the information you need and you feel comfortable making a decision. And then you okay. then there's a, a, a motion to close the hearing, a second and a vote. Um, sorry, I'm sure we all have many questions. Um, so a couple questions on that. One is, if you realize you've made a mistake in closing it, can you reopen it at that time? Make a motion again to reopen the public hearing. You can, it is it's possible. Hand. Okay. And then with that, I think some of our uh, confusion may be that many of these items on here are not listed as public hearings, but we are, there are applications and we go through the process of having the applicant explain what they're doing. And then we go do a Q and A basically back and forth, but it's not specified to be a public hearing. Is that the way we should be conducting business? That's how we have them. Yeah. You hold public hearings on, on those permits and licenses that by ordinance or statute require that you hold a, a public hearing. Otherwise, it's a meeting and it's not a hearing. So the one, the, the applications that require a legal notice, um, those are the ones that I put on the agenda as public hearings. Um, but other other ones like just simple applications, those, not to my knowledge, require a public hearing. Right. 
And you could, I mean, in, in that case, you could read the application and say, application looks fine to me, I move to approve and never even hear from the applicant. If you think that you have enough information. Right, and are they, um, do they have to show up at the meeting? I know we've had some where they were asked to, to come to the meeting, they didn't, and we still approved it because it was pretty straightforward. I guess I'm wondering, are they expected to come to every meeting? I mean, they should still be in, are they sort of invited to every meeting? Is that the language of it? Everybody in the world is invited to every meeting. Right, but they don't necessarily have to they don't have yeah, to be there. To if it's not a public point. hearing, they don't have to be there. Interesting. Okay. Um, but of course, they run the risk at the, that you're not going to approve their application if you have questions right. and they're not there. Right. Um, and so then during the course of this meeting, too, it's really Brian should be, I mean, it, it seems sort of loosely we've covered that. like. Brian, you see, you know, you'll start the item and then you'll sort of ask if we have questions. I mean, is that in terms of you saying like directing people to speak or asking people to speak, like uh, that's essentially well, enough of a following or does he have to say? I, I, I'm not going to tell you that you, uh, that, you know, that you need to change what you're doing for the most part okay, for when it's just the three of you. Um, I know it's very informal. It's a very small committee. Um, but technically speaking, he, you know, the, the chair should recognize people before they speak. Even commission members? Even commission members. Hmm. Even Meaning like I would literally have to go, um, Commissioner Khan, are there any questions? Or like I recognize Commissioner Khan. No. <laughs> uh, generally what would happen would be that Commissioner Khan would raise her hand and you would recognize her. I mean, I own my own business, but I don't like that much authority. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you want to uh, give up the chair. Maybe. <laughs> Someone else do it. Maybe. Honestly. So, no, I get it, though. So what if Brian says no to Helen? <laughs> yeah. I mean, doesn't she have a right as a commissioner to speak her piece? Yes, yeah, she does. But she has to be recognized. And obviously, if a chair is, is misbehaving, um, there are remedies for that as well. If the chair is not recognizing other commissioners to speak, uh, it's just a matter of decorum. It's not a matter of um, deciding whether anybody can speak or not. It's just making sure that it's done in an orderly fashion. And I recognize, again, that this is a small committee and it's fairly, fairly informal. Well, I would never do that because that would just be rude. So. <laughs> everyone will be able to speak their piece. So. Um, I have a question about, um, it's not about the public hearings, but it's about rules of order for our commission. So, and, and in part being on Zoom, we're all looking at each other. And when we've, you know, specifically last month when we had all these neighbors coming, they're looking at each other and it changes the, the decorum, it changes the whole vibe of how people should behave. When we're in council chambers, there's a lectern you actually have to physically stand at in order mm -hmm. to speak. And so we didn't have this problem before. Um, and, and when we were in council chambers pre-COVID, we also never had, because it was never necessary because people didn't really come see us all that often, but we never had a specific time frame for people to speak during public comment at, or time limit to speak during public comment at the beginning of the meeting. Um, do, should we be aware of a known time limit or is it, does each commission decide how they want to handle it? Yeah, you, you should decide that on your own to figure out when, uh, how long you're, you're going to allow for public comment. And that should be set for every meeting. It should be the same length of time. Oh, there should be a regulation on that. Yeah. This is not something that you can do just on the fly. So one guy gets two minutes, the next guy gets five. We don't do no, that. No, 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 no. You should decide what the overall time limit is, if you want to impose one, I don't know, an hour, two hours, whatever, and for a time limit on each individual speaker, and you should stick to it. Yep. Because the, the one thing that you can't do 
is give preference um, and based upon the content of what the person's saying. And that is a real risk that if you don't have any regulations, uh, I'm not saying that it could ha it's gonna happen in this committee, but you can see how that can be abused. And if all of a sudden the chair doesn't like what's being said, okay? You really can't regulate the content of speech. Mm -hmm. Can regulate the time, the place, and the manner of speech, but not the content. So you yeah. can limit the time that each person has to speak, limit the time for public comment, at which time it closes down. For instance, go. last month, um, we didn't have a time limit. And that was a three and a half hour meeting. And then I, I remember being in one with Bill as chair and, and we had quite the violation and, and a lot of people on the behalf of it. And he set a three minute time limit yeah. per person. I think that's you know, or something. So yeah, if you can't say what you have to say in three minutes, then yeah, there's, right. there's, there's, there's an issue. So is uh, that something we can decide on um, now and it, that just be the way it is? Or is it something that needs to go into the rules and regulations of the commission? Into the rules and regulations, you should put it on an agenda. Okay. Along so, with, oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. So I was going to say so on the agenda, it, would, it literally, you know, on, maybe on all public hearings, you know, each person is given three minutes and you just announce well, that's that. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, the public comment is something different than a public hearing. So uh, public comment is an opportunity to address the commission before the commission starts its meeting. This is the one and only time that the outside is, is given the opportunity to address the commission. Um, a public hearing, people have a right to address you. And it, there are times when it needs to be more than three minutes. But since this is an exception, public comment is an exception to the rule that no one has a right to address the commission during a meeting. That's the, ex you're making an exception so you can limit the exception. In the public hearing realm, it may be that it takes more than three minutes to, you know, explain a very complicated proposal. Uh, so what do you do if, like, for instance, last month, one, one of the neighbors just kept going on a rant, repeating himself, like, time after time, and, like, three times. And it's like, man. Okay. So what do you do? Just shut them down? The, I, I the, mean. The, the chair has the right to cut off evidence if it is irrelevant or repetitive. You know, you give somebody some leeway to state something once, twice, maybe three times. But after that, you can. I finally said that. I finally did, you know. Right. But, it, but you have to be careful that it's not about the content of what the person's saying. That's key. That's like the. the... Oh, that's right. So you ask, is there anything new that you'd like to speak about? We've heard what you've said three times now. Right. You know, I get it. Okay. Okay. So just for clarification, because now I'm confused, because this whole time I thought when we were talking about limiting public comment, I thought it was during a public hearing. You're saying it's just at that initial when we, no, the, hardly, uh, frankly, we hardly get anyone saying anything. <laughs> right. Under the administrative order, the mayor's administrative order, every board has to have a period of public comment that people can come and tell you what they want to tell you uh, in the context of your context of your meeting. That's totally different than a public hearing when people have a, a right under the due process clause to address you and tell you what they think you need to know about a pending application that you are adjudicating. The difference between a meeting and a, and a public hearing is that in a public hearing, you're deciding the rights of a particular individual. You know, last month it was JJ's, you know, you, I don't know who you had a hearing for today, but there are public hearings and you're deciding the rights of a particular entity or business or individual. A meeting is just a general discussion that applies to everyone. It's not about any particular individual. Okay, so they can, so the way we ran it, I guess was correct. So they can speak for as long as they want. They can speak multiple times in a hearing until the chair decides like this is repetitive and you're not adding information. That's right. So, so this talk that we're seeing about three minute limits has nothing to do with no, nothing to do with hearing. public hearing. Just oh, so, that's where we need it. <laughs> so can you put a time limit on comment during a public hearing? No, probably not. Okay. 
Well, the chair has to recognize the the speaker, the person speaking. That's they right. can't be Absolutely. speaking out of turn. So well, that's that's the key. You'll 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 have a much better meeting if you if in a in a hearing you're really controlling who is speaking and requiring everybody to be recognized. That's the way you control a public hearing. So um, on the back end of a public hearing, you know, just like JJ's, if, if a person, if we go through, you, you just said something interesting, you know, we are deciding the rights of that particular person um, in that public hearing. If they don't like the outcome, this commission has the right to hear it again, uh, bring it up again, or do they have to go to the Supreme Court or what is the ruling on that? So um, if, so let me put it this way. Let me just use JJ's as an example. JJ's is unhappy with, with the decision that the commission made. They have the right to go to court and they have 60 days to do it under what's called the certiorari statute. Okay. They can ask you to reconsider. It's not stopping that 60 day clock. And if you decide to decline to reconsider, you're not starting that clock again. So, you know, it's not either or. If they want to appeal your decision they have to file in the Superior Court. They can ask for you to reconsider your decision and you can say, no, we're not going to reconsider. We're not even gonna hear it. You could say, yeah, we'll reconsider it and hold a hearing and then do whatever you're gonna do. And if you uphold your earlier decision, they've probably lost the 60 day clock to, to appeal your original decision. Because if they appeal your failure to reconsider, they're only appealing your failure to reconsider, not the underlying decision you made. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, it's not a substitute for going to superior court. They're two separate things. Okay. And I will say in the case of JJ's reading that letter a couple of times, he made no specific request. I mean, so that's sort of my confusion with that. He, he at the very well, bottom, he said, he please, said help. please help me. He didn't say <laughs> I don't know what that I is. Like, it's not a request, except it's, I, but there wasn't a specific, yeah, uh, I'd like well, you we to can consider. I would like the, this is what I would like on my entertainment license. I didn't feel that it put us in any position to do right. anything. And, and, and of course, it, if they're coming back to you for reconsideration with no new evidence nothing new. Well, I mean, presumably you made a decision that was based upon the evidence and it wasn't arbitrary and it wasn't capricious. It was based upon what you heard. Um, and, you know, if they come back and ask you to reconsider without presenting any new evidence, um, that's a problem. So in the letter, though, he's got a petition with over 100 people or so that are in favor of him and all in the same area neighborhood. So he says, which we have I mean, to be able to bring that before us. He can send you whatever he wants to send you and you can do with it what you as a commission want to do with it. Right. If you're inclined to, you know, have another hearing on this issue, you could do that. Um, yeah. But you're not obligated to do that. And, and you know, the applicant, in this case, JJ's, is, is, is you know, not, it, not preserving its rights uh, if it just comes back to you for a reconsideration and it doesn't appeal your underlying decision. Yeah. So in that case, I would say we haven't seen the petition. And no, yeah. there's been no petition for yeah. a reconsideration. It will be a yeah. specific, you would get a specific request to reconsider your decision. Right. Uh, you know, just to, I didn't see anything in that letter in which you specifically asked you to do and anything to reconsider your decision and allow 
you know, fill in the blank. Well, it- you know, let's look at it like it is. I mean, you can legally look at it and slice and dice it all you want. I mean, the fact that he showed up for public comment today, the fact that he wrote a letter, the fact that he went to get a petition amongst his peers shows he's really trying, but he doesn't know the rules of the commission as well as we don't even know the rules. That's why you're here today lecturing us. I mean, so to say that JJ is not trying and not wanting us to change or help or do something is, is um, that's, that's out of bounds. I mean, I would, I mean, if you don't see it, he's, he's begging us without begging. You know what I mean? I mean, that's none clear of evidence. Issues, none of the issues in, in even if, if that's considered evidence that he wrote that email and that he has a petition, none of that is addressing the issues that brought us to the decision that we did, which was the communication with the neighbors and the volume and frequency and the amplification of the music. Those are the issues. Yeah. That should be addressed if he wants to. Yeah. yeah, like I said, I don't think he knows how he's supposed to write the letter. I mean, without hiring an attorney, probably. You know, he he's he's he doing what he can. Yeah, but he wrote that from you know from what I read, that wasn't his attorney's letter, so it would have. I think it would have read a lot different. I'm just saying, like as a commissioner, I'm I haven't been presented with a specific request. It seems, and, right. and I haven't any, and he references a petition, but we haven't seen it. So I right. just think feel like it would be inappropriate for me to like proactively say, you know what, I think we should open up this hearing again for for this application because it, it hasn't actually been asked of me. And I think it's probably would be us stepping out of bounds to say, we're just going to unilaterally make this decision. We haven't even been asked. Yeah, I don't think he, what I'm trying to tell you is I don't think he officially knows how to ask. That's why the closing of his letter was, please help me. So he's asking us for our guidance and help. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest with you. You know, at one one of your proposals, and I'm sorry to sideline this and go in a different direction, uh, attorney, see all, but you know, if one of your proposals was to go amplified every other every other week, one day a week, and then you know we're unplugged. But I mean, I think his issue is unplugged. Everybody's canceled. They won't do it unless it's amplified. So. That's a problem for the musicians that he's hiring then. He can, he can, he came to us for a license to enhance the dining experience right. of his clients. And that's awesome. That's possible, but it just wasn't happening how it was laid out. And he can get, he can get entertainment who aren't bands who insist on being amplified in a space that's creating so much acoustic issues. It's, you know, I think it's. I don't a think we should be problem. debating. Yeah, we don't need to. Don't should, it's not on the agenda. We shouldn't be yeah, debating no, JJ's. Right. Yeah. But um, you know. So can I ask a question? Since we have you here, because obviously these outdoor entertainment licenses have become the thorn in our side, mm-hmm. and it's very new. Um, I am. I am feeling the need to have some kind of guidelines or some kind of regulations. Anything. Because what we're doing now is we are by trial and error um, allowing these licenses and then we allow them and then we see what happens and then we go, oops, or great. Um, And I am just wondering if this ultimately, you know, since this seems to be the new normal now and it's gonna clearly continue beyond the pandemic, um, if this is even something that is a city council issue, if the, I don't know how historically even in terms of indoor entertainment, if there's some kind of guideline we can use beyond three people making personal decisions or you know, based on knowledge we have um, about this. Um, you know, I, if this is going to become a regular thing, I personally would like to have some, something I can point to saying this, this is what we're going by, not just my gut instinct about whether this is gonna impact the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. That's kind of my point earlier when I said, you know, you grant, it's an outdoor entertainment. I think what Northampton's doing because of everybody oh. outside, they are um, catching on that outdoor entertainment is very popular and, and people are coming to their establishments. So that's kind of getting at before is you grant it and let, let the police handle it if it becomes a problem. I don't know how you would write, like he, like, you know, 
Alan said earlier, every single situation, you can split that pie a million ways. They're all different. You know, like Spoletto's is different than Packard's and so on and so forth. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there could be a guide, right? But how would you? Uh, well, you could. I mean, the statute guides you on on what you're actually looking for. Um, and so, you know, it is a it is a balance, and I and I and I understand that it, you know it's a thorn, but it's just a balance. And it was no different when it was indoors; it was also a balance. I mean, I'm sure that you know rock and roll in a in a bar below residences is a problem, even if it's indoors, if it's you know loud and amplified. Yeah, which we've had even in my time. There was was it the majestic? There was yeah. Uh, residents indoors and then we they had to come to us several times and we sort of helped them negotiate it right um, and bring it down it was the same with uh, the one that you mentioned natasha i remember yeah, yeah, that person one. like three months in a row that guy came to the meetings yeah so then that sounds like a no continue to do what we're doing well yeah and ultimately in those cases it was the neighbors and the businesses yeah, and it's literally trial and error. And I, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this, it does make me uncomfortable too. The idea of like, let's let the police hash it out. I mean, that seems to be not a solution of like, let's, let's, let's wait till the police are called and then they can solve it. I, I'm trying to avoid that happening in the first place, you know, if we right. and, and for the business and for the neighbors. Yeah, it's also a problem for the police. Yes, um, yeah, I don't think that's fair. You know, this is exactly what people want the police out of. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's not criminal. Right. How come they show up to my house then if I have a graduation party? Well, because we've expected them to do this, but we're not yeah. uh, we're not promoting this as a police effort. Um, you know. Yeah. The police. Anyway. Understood. You you, you do understand this has been an issue. Uh, mm. Um, okay, so we just continue doing the best we can with the information we have and seeing the result that, that comes from it. <laughs> right, and you know, you, you make, yes, you, you exercise your discretion as wisely as you can. And, um, you know, but, you know, obviously the more frequent it is, the, the greater the problem, the later it goes on. Yeah. The loud, you know, the amplified versus, you know, unamplified. These are all the balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Was there anything else? Yes, there was a part two, I think. Don't we have another item on the agenda? Where are you? Yeah, the... Um misrepresentation of fair wage compliance certificates for liquor licenses right. held by Mr. Eric Sewer. Oh, now, oh, I see. I don't see Attorney Seawald mentioned in that. I, I guess I was under the impression that you were part of that discussion. Is that? He's not mentioned in the actual okay. item, but I, I'm hoping he can stay. And... Well, let me check my watch. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, of course I'll stay. <laughs> So do we want to move um, move on to item 11 in that discussion? We're done with, uh, are we, have we covered everything public hearing wise? Yeah, do we all understand the public hearing? So it's essentially the items on the agenda will be listed the way they have in the past and we'll continue to do it. It sounds like we've, we've roughly at least um, sort of followed the correct protocol, except yeah. for with the public hearings opening them immediately. Yep, that was and, to me. I'm glad, you, glad yeah. we learned that. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. I was always guessing. Yeah, I was never sure about in terms of the applicant, asking questions of the applicant, if that was during the public hearing or on either side of them. So the answer is yes, during the public hearing. If we have follow-up questions on information after we've closed it, the chair can ask essentially ask them to provide not i guess not new information but clarification sounds like okay 
All right. Okay, well, let's move on to item 11, discussion and misrepresentation of fair wage compliance certificates, um, cer certifications for liquor licenses held by Mr. Eric Sor. How do we open this? Well, it's just a discussion. It's, yeah. 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 So as you know, uh, Eric has citations um, from the Attorney General's office. Um, there's a, a few of them. There's one citation in particular that was issued in, I think it was May 2020. Um, and there was an appeal process. He missed the appeal process. So that one's kind of the one that we can act on. Um, Alan, correct me if I'm saying anything wrong. Okay. Um, and then, so then in November of 2020, he filled out fair wage compliance certificates for with the re renewal paperwork and noted that he did not have any judgments against him when in fact he had. Is the, does the judgment apply to the establishment? It's um, Iron Horse Ventures, Inc. and 2628 Center Street, which is um, which there's two, two establishments. So Iron Horse Ventures holds the Iron Horse liquor license and 2628 Center Street holds the Green Room liquor license. So those were the two from May of 2020 that were then represented as being fine in November of 2020. Correct. So, okay. So, the, so the, the, the one citation that was not appealed was for failure to pro provide records in violation of a specific section of chapter 151. And a violation of chapter 151, a citation for violation of chapter 151 is one of the violations in your regulations that um, requires disclosure. And he failed to disclose and actually uh, misled you on whether there was anything outstanding at the time he applied for the licenses. And so um, he has to uh, post a wage bond for, you know, to cover this. It's a $7,500 citation. His other citations that are under repeal are much larger than that. I think the total he owes is around $100,000. Um, and uh, for all kinds of wage, actual wage violations. This violation is for failure to provide records as required under chapter 151. He's not been cooperative as I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear. So what is your recommendation? Well, you know, um, uh, I, my recommendation is that the commission has to decide what it wants to do. I mean, obviously it's not a good policy to allow uh, an applicant to falsify records and not take any action when you find out that the records were not true. Um, so, um, you know, the possibility is for you to um, call them in on a hearing and on a disciplinary hearing, potentially suspend his license for a period of time. That's what I was thinking. And this is specifically for Iron Horse and Green Room. Iron Horse Ventures in 26 to 28 okay. Center Street, LLC, and him individually, but I don't think he holds any licenses individually. Okay. He's the manager of record on all of them, but, right. but I don't think that means he holds them, right? No, he doesn't. No, the, 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 right. the, either the corporation or the LLC holds the license. He's just the manager. So, also, on top of this, he hasn't received any of his 2021 licenses, like his actual physical copies, because he didn't have inspections during November of last year. And since they were closed, the building department kind of said, okay, we'll do inspections before you open. And then at that time, you can get your license. So in the meantime, this all happened. So he doesn't have any physical copies of his license. So Last week, I sent an email, which I think I BCC'd you all on, about having to post a wage bond. Um, he then called and kind of um, um, he couldn't find a company that would provide a wage bond. I gave him Val's information, and I haven't heard anything since. 
But if the commission were to do to go the route of holding a disciplinary hearing and possibly suspending it, there's no license right now to, to suspend. Okay, right. So is he currently running businesses or serving alcohol at businesses that do not are not licensed or he is looking to reopen the business? He's looking to he was looking to reopen the green room last Friday. And I talked to him Friday and he was kind of in a panic um, and told me that all the people that um, went to the AG's office against him are the exact same people that are ready and willing to open the green room. So, and he, he said there was a lot of miscommunication. Um, so, oh, I mean, that's neither here nor there. Um, but I, I guess I just don't know how we would go about holding or possibly suspending a license if he doesn't have a license to begin with. Well, it's pending for him, pending inspection, and, right? He actually, I had spoken to the billing department before I found out about, I forget what it was, but the billing department went and did inspect. Okay. So is there fees that he hasn't paid? The wage bonds, right? Yeah, just the wage bonds. Right. No, yeah. And do we typically, we, we hold the license until the wage bonds paid. So... I did. Yeah, so he, I mean, he has to come become current. But you, you sent him the, the email stating all that, correct? Um, more or less, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, so do we call him in for next, you know, the next meeting? Or is it more emails? You know, he's got to well, pay his wage what... bond. Yeah, well, it depends on what the commission wants to do. I mean, the wage bond is a separate issue from the, you know, the falsification of records. That's a completely separate issue. I mean, your your regulations state what the wage bond is in the first year. It's three times. So he needs to come up with a wage bond of $22,500 for, um, for however many uh, licenses there are. Uh, Oh, well, that's times each license. Oh yeah, nice. Ouch. So yeah, so I mean, he needs to um, he needs to get communication sent to him regarding that. I would say first and foremost. If that's he gets, what if, sent him, yeah. Yeah. yeah so if, and I've talked to him about it. He knows what he needs to do. Yeah. So if he becomes current, then he he can open, and then we can address his falsification afterwards. Do you want to just put this off until such time as he gets his licenses and then you could call him in after he gets his licenses? That's what I was thinking. So essentially what we're saying is we, he gets his wage bond, he gets the licenses and then we call him in and we may say, and now we're, we're revoking them or suspending them. Is that, is that the discussion we're having? And, um, <laughs> I mean, it's totally up to the I, commission. That's why I understand. Yeah. Um, unless you propose some other way. I mean, obviously the wage bond, you know, the protection for the people that uh, he employs. I'm just thinking of the employees, you know, not necessarily Eric so much, but if the licenses are put into play um, and they can work and then it's just a suspension, I would think if it's, uh, I don't I don't know that we would revoke. Um, I've never been in any situation with falsification of records. I mean, Alan, uh, how harsh should we, you know, hit with that? I mean, how, how badly should that be on this commission? Yeah, and is there a pre any precedent for falsification? Right. Uh, not that I'm aware of off the top of my head, certainly not in Northampton, and every situation, as I said, is different. So, you know, um, I'm not sure that there are precedents. Um, I, I mean, just my own feeling, and I don't get a vote here, and you know, this is really up to you three. Um, suspension sounds like a much more appropriate um, discipline than revocation. I mean, revocation is permanent. Um, and, uh, you know, I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna come in and say, 
not about wages. That wasn't about wages. It was just a misunderstanding with the attorney general's office. And I didn't realize it. It was a, it was a mistake. Um, um, I can hear it now. He did tell me that he never got the notice because they had the wrong address. Well, it's a lien of record now at the Registry of Deeds. So uh, you got the notice now. So. And so, Alan, you're saying there's these other uh, wage issues that are on appeal. Right. right. So he appealed all and, of the and rest. That, of I'm sorry. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, oh so, so he appealed these other. So that... Right now, if those are in that process of appeal, that's nothing that impacts our decision making about wage bonds or anything else. We wait and see how that plays out. Right, because your regulation talks about a final administrative citation and it's not final because it's under appeal. Okay, so there is the potential. I mean, I don't know how long these cases go. Potential that that would impact his licenses for 2022. Oh yeah. Depending on when it's finalized. But potential, but okay. when we turn to 2023, some at some point, he's going to have a much larger wage bond. So, um, <laughs> so uh, Alan, an official notice needs to be sent to him regarding if he does yeah. not pay these wage bonds that you know his license can't be reinstated until that point. He already knows that he got that from Annie already. What we okay. need to send him is a formal notice of hearing when you're ready to hold a public hearing. Right. About the falsification of records. Right, you know, the disciplinary public hearing. Okay, so your, your recommendation for us is to sit and wait till this settles and then handle? Uh, I think that you could set them up for a, a hearing um, um, anytime. I mean, how often do you meet? Do you meet monthly or? Monthly, yeah. You would think by the time your next month's meeting comes along, he'll have, uh, and you know, you can hold any suspension in abeyance until the bond is posted. Right. True. All right. So, Andy, do you want to put that on agenda next month? We'll have to send to have... a, a, a notice. Right. Well, uh, put on the agenda for what? We'll send them notice to come before us for public hearing. So and then we hold. You say just, you want a hearing. Well, that's what we were just asking Attorney Seawold. So, uh, I mean, if we're going to go right at it, that's that's what we're asking your advice on. You know what your suggestion is. I guess I don't but, see the point of. Um, coming in for a hearing and suspending a license to be held in abeyance until he posts the wage bond when he can't, he doesn't have a license anyway. So what do you, you're not suspending anything. Yeah, but those, yeah, you are. Are, yeah, you are. The value is in the license. So he's not going to want to do without that. You're going to close both of those places without a license. So that's so, 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 so Annie, what, what I'm suggesting you could do is um, have the hearing and hold, so let's just say you suspend for a week. Just, I mean, I'm not telling you that's what you should do. I'm just giving you an example. That week will commence after the wage bond oh. is posted. Okay. So he's still closed until he poses a wage bond, then he's got to wait another week. Gotcha, sorry, I, I misunderstood that, okay. And if they, want to hold this hearing and we need a motion. Right. Right. Okay. There's nothing specifically on the agenda that says anything about voting. It just says a discussion. The discussion is, and the, the end of the discussion is that you are going to have a public hearing. Okay. And, uh, a disciplinary hearing. Okay. So if someone wants to make that motion. I'll make it. Are we it. all on board with that? 
Is that what everybody wants to do? Well, why don't we okay. make a motion and then have a discussion and a vote? See, that would be the way to find out what everybody wants to do. Oh, so I thought you had to vote right on right away when you make a motion. You had to vote on it right away. No, you, no, the, a motion in a second and then discussion. Ah, okay. And then when discussion is done, you call a vote. All right, so I'll make a motion that we hold a disciplinary hearing regarding uh, falsification of or misrepresentation um, of, of the uh, licenses, I, I, I guess, right? So wage, of the, wage of the fair wage, oh, the, wage, the wage certifications and its compliance. For next Does month. That motion work. Second. So that motion looks for a second. <laughs> Did you you got the, uh, Annie the wording of that? Here. It's basically just a motion to hold a, a public hearing next month. You know, put it on the agenda okay. for item eleven discussion. You know, for the misrepresentation of fair wage compliance certifications for liquor licenses held by Mr. Eric Shore. Um, Natasha. By, by 2628 Center Street LLC and uh, Iron Horse Ventures. Corporate. By 2628, um, I don't know the addresses, but Iron Horse Ventures and 2628 Center Street LLC. 2628 uh, Center Street. Oh. So that's the motion. I'll second. So now open for discussion. I think, um, yeah, I think we should have this uh, disciplinary hearing in September. Yes. Yeah, I'm on board as well. Yeah. Okay. So then all in favor? Aye. Aye. You're going to have to do a roll call vote on every vote yep. during yep. Zoom. I got you. I'm on, I'm on top of that one. Um, <laughs> Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Excellent. We are Great. all for the road call. Thank you, Alan. Thank, Thank you for you. your Thank help. You. Good night. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alan. No problem. Thank you. Uh, number 12, discussion of possibility of changing regular meeting day and time. Um, I can start off on that and say that uh, it's a stress enough for me at four o'clock. Um, anything later than that would um, crush anything else that I've got going. So other than that, whoever else wants to discuss it. Well, I, oh. No, go ahead. Well, just, uh, yeah, I was the one who brought it up. I brought it up just because with my current schedule, I am leaving work early and racing as fast as I can and leaving people on the lurch to come to these meetings. However, that being said, I know it is it is once a month and for all I know, we change the time and then two months from now, my schedule will change. So I guess I'm in the position <laughs> where I don't wanna force it. It sounded like in our pre-discussion last month that it was gonna be sort of a hardship for everyone else to change it. I mean, for me, yes, moving it to 4.30 would make a difference, but it sounds, but if that's um, difficult for multiple people present, then I don't want to pursue it. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Is there a day that work that the 4 p.m. doesn't impact your work schedule? I don't know if you guys Yeah, I mean, them. these days, oh. Monday, but I think Monday, oh, oh. She, yeah, Natasha was asking if there's a day that 4 p.m. doesn't impact me, and I would say Mondays, but I think Mondays for people are tend to be horrible otherwise. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I uh, can, with enough notice, um, <laughs> I, can work around the, I can make the meeting work. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, I could, I could shift things to accommodate it, so I can be flexible based on your two schedules. Right. I mean, so well, I'll, I'll put out there because then, like, I know it's been this. I mean, ever since I've been on commission, this has been the time, and amazingly, it somehow works. 
I don't know how it has, but um, so Brian, I guess would, and Annie, because I know it's a problem for you, pushing even just to 430, is that, does that throw everything? I could, I could do 430. I mean, up until recently, you know, you remember when we used to meet in person, we were like really ecstatic over our eight minute meeting and 15 and 18 minute meetings, you know, and that worked because those were the days. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I know that in the winter, you know, and all throughout these chamber things, I try to get to, um, you know, just for yeah. networking for my own business. And then, of course, summertime, I have obligations. Um, that could start at 3.30 and they go at five o'clock at the latest, um, mm -hmm. you know? And so today I had to actually make more uh, different arrangements, just looking at the the agenda. I knew that it was gonna go over again. So, I mean, I, I in other words, it's, it's a hardship for me as it is, you know? So if it went later, it would be even more so. Um, that's just, you know, my thing. But I mean, and you, what is it you do with your schedule that would change? I mean, I, um, yeah, so I run these programs with all out adventures. So I'm like literally, literally like out on the water and coming in early and racing home. And, um, oh, and in okay. fact, we're, as far as we know, we're not going to be meeting in person. Like if they were in person, then I'd have to meet, I mean, leave even earlier. But, um, but those seasonally, those things change. So, so that's why I'm being hesitant about pushing for this. And then, you know, the well, I mean, change in my schedule will be different. Yeah. So the, the commission can run on two commissioners. I mean, so if, would it be a harsh thing if you showed up just as soon as you could and it wasn't leaving people in the lurch or I know it's a catch up yeah. thing I mean, and it, you know, it's right. Right. Yeah. Hard not yeah, to I be mean, there. I but still, I mean, it's more, yeah, so I'm not leaving, I should be honest, it's not like I'm leaving a program, it's the post program, everything we do, you know, putting everything away, cleaning up, you know, writing reports, things like that. You just but, have a big so, heart and you don't want to leave people hanging. I guess I'm screwing everyone else and I'm taking off. Yeah, be like, see ya. Happening. Go. And, yeah, and, so, I'll tell you what, I it. would rather and, stay there and help you clean up and someone else can run these meetings. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, maybe I should. I'll just show up. Right? Depending on what the first two agenda items are, I may or may not be there. I'm just kidding. That, that's so anyway, fine as long so as, I, as, as, long as yeah. the other two were there. Right. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, right. if, if especially if the agenda is just uh, approving these short-term liquor licenses. I mean, that's simple, right. easy peasy stuff. So. If we could, if we could go back to that. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'll take a, an agenda with 45 uh, short-term liquor licenses, please. <laughs> this is some craziness. But. So, um, all right. Yeah. So anyway, I will, I'm going to withdraw. I, I'll continue to make this work. Um, and like I say, things may change seasonally. And so I don't want to push it. Well, we appreciate it. I mean, so, we know what you're going through. Thank you. Also, I feel like these long agendas aren't going to continue forever. I feel like it, part of it was COVID. Another part was people want to make amendments because trying to come out of COVID. Um, so I don't think they're going to be this long forever. So maybe once we're back in person, there's a possibility of moving it to 430. I don't know. Maybe we can talk about it later when it right. things change. Um, yeah, I don't know. Because I mean, if we have those quick meetings and it starts at 4.30, I mean, Brian could probably still get to the chamber. And if they're the quick ones, then I don't know, maybe it would be helpful starting later for Brian because sometimes you get stuck on the road. I don't know. Yeah. So maybe discuss it when we are back in person. Yeah, because when we're in person, you don't want me coming directly from my program to that room. <laughs> You want to give some time to change. <laughs> no one wants to be around that. <laughs> yeah, so just a thought. Yeah. All right, are we all set to move on to 13 approval of minutes? Right. 
Yes, so, reading the minutes, it seemed like a much simpler meeting than the actual meeting, but I know that you have to, uh, you have yes, to actually, get the high points. <laughs> with Natasha's um, steward, stewardship of sending me all the uh, public meeting information that she had found, because I apparently couldn't find that, um, I was reading about minutes, and apparently you're not, even in public comment, you're really not supposed to write um, everyone's thoughts and feelings. And even with you guys, I'm not supposed to be writing your opinions, which is odd. So, that's right. Yeah. So I was, um, I pared it down a little bit. So good. Well, hopefully, yeah, it, no, that's good. It, I hope, hopefully, it caught the gist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It definitely hit all the key points. So, you get a motion. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'll make. Make a motion to approve the minutes of July 7th, 2021. I'll second. Anyone want to second that? All in favor. Aye. I need a second. Aye. <laughs> Aye. And um, Ryan. Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, any new business, Annie? Nope, I got nothing. Okay. The, um, the only thing I wanted to ask you guys and bring up is in regarding after that reading that letter and seeing what JJ is going through, you know, the two of you guys were considering the vote of amplified music every other weekend, one day a week or something like that. I mean, is there mm -hmm. any way you would consider going one night amplified for him just so he can get back on track with some music outdoors? You know yeah. what I mean? Cause can we even it, discuss that? Um, yeah, you, you guys did. No, but can we now discuss it? I guess well, not Not getting into the gist of what they want to do, but what are you getting at, Brian? Are you asking them to... Amend the vote. So you're asking, okay, so you can, as you can motion to um, hold a, hold another hearing for reconsideration of your previous vote. Right. But if there's a no, you know, like I talked to an attorney earlier today and he said, if, if no one's willing to, then what's the point? So not right. But the, the way to find out is what is to, to, I guess, to vote and see if you have a second. So to be official, you mean? Yeah. So just so everybody, is everybody clear at what I'm asking? Yeah. I, and I don't know if this goes against the rules, but I guess I, I would want to have a little discussion now. Just about we wouldn't, or we, we can't wouldn't discuss. No, we wouldn't do yeah. any vote changing anything now. It's just rather a motion. We want to actually have um, a discussion and hearing on that to amend that. It's because uh, yes. Attorney Seawald said we have the power to do that. We can actually bring that back up onto the table without, and then we can amend it at will uh, if we agree to do it. And only two people have to to agree. Obviously, we all know that. So. So to be well, official, you're saying I need to make a motion, Annie, that says, you know, do what, what is it I would have, how would I, I word it? I suggest that you make a motion, if this is how you're feeling, make a motion to hold a hearing to reconsider your previous vote, to a, your previous vote that modified the JJ's entertainment license. Yeah, I mean, if we were willing to do it, my, but so just so you understand, my logic was if you're willing to do it every other Friday or every other Saturday, whatever he chose, what's the big deal on one every night a week? Every weekend, no. I understand that. But okay. you know what? People can go to dinner too. And the biggest guy waving the biggest banner lives in Williamsburg, but he's set up in his house in Florence. So. You know, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to this behind the scenes. Not that I want to get this commission involved in that. And I don't want to even get myself involved, but it pulls at my heartstrings, you know, reading that, you know, he's got clients coming in and leaving. You guys all read the letter. So, you know, and if you watch the video, you saw too, it's not, it's not as bad as they're making it out to be. So I'm just saying we already adjusted the time, even if it's two hours, it was three, correct? That's what it was, three hours. It was five to eight thirty or something like that. I can't remember what it was, <clears throat> but we went down to two hours, right? The latest vote. Mm -hmm. 
he's allowed to do unplugged it's or 30 to eight i think yeah i don't think we adjusted the hours yeah so 5 30 to 8 and it's i don't know um but one of the one of the options on the table was to be amplified every other week so Ooh. and he's his biggest thing is what i read is he can't get entertainment of the type of the what his clientele is looking for is what i can say i mean i'm not arguing with you natasha on the fact that can you find somebody just acoustic uh, probably but i think what he's trying to say is his clientele's choice of entertainment he can't get anybody that'll do it everybody he had lined up and had a following all canceled on him okay so we're we're, we're moving into the territory of discussion so i just want to be clear Brian, if you want to make a motion, I feel like now's the time. Yeah, I'll make a motion to, how am I supposed to do it? Set up a hearing to re-amend or amend the previous. Make a motion to hold a public hearing. Yep, make a motion to hold a public hearing to amend previous. To reconsider the oh. previous vote. To reconsider the previous vote. On the entertainment license held by JJ's Tavern. On the entertainment license held by JJ's, I don't know what his business is, his DBA, yeah. if yeah. I need that. So that's my motion. So is there a second? So and I'm just gonna remind folks that we can second, we can just, Yes, and then we can second and then discuss up or down. <laughs> That's right. And I will second the motion so we can move to discussion. All right, moving to discussion. So this is where we were before, right? Now we can discuss a little bit. Annie? Uh, yeah, but also I don't want to get too into it because it, this No, we're not. It's just a matter of do we want to I mean the discussion basically should be the do we want to consider having a public hearing of the possibility of changing the outcome of that license and a varied I thing? Discuss and that because that was your motion. I can. I think I have something that's allowable to say. I think that's not like beyond discussion. Mm -hmm. In based on the the letter that was sent to all of us, the. JJ's did not ask for us to conduct this hearing. So I feel like to sort of thinking about what we've just listened from attorney Seawald, we're going a little bit into a territory that's out of balance when we're asking for something to be done that the app that uh, the license holder hasn't asked us for because it indicates to me that perhaps the license holder doesn't have any new evidence and I'm not sure what the point is. I 100% agree. And however, we've lost Brian, I think. <sighs> Natasha, you're reading my mind today. <laughs> Brian, did you hear what I said? You were frozen? Uh, I heard absolutely nothing after what Annie was saying. So what I said was that... I can repeat it if you want, because I wrote it down. Thank you. Sure. Um, she said that based on the letter, JJ's did not specifically ask the commission to conduct the hearing. So she feels like uh, you're going into the territory that is out of balance. Um, when asked, something to be done that the license holder hasn't asked for because it indicates that the license holder doesn't have any new evidence. So she doesn't know what the point is. Right. So the point is, is if he was on right now, he would absolutely tell you that's what he was asking. If you can't read between the lines, he didn't know how to ask. He's not privy to these laws. Yeah, right. But I'm trying to, to adhere to what we've just been instructed to do as, and, and conduct our responsibilities as commissioners. And that is to maintain a balance. And I feel like it is out of balance to be, to be um, advocating for that to happen in this forum. From so if it's a no, just tell me a no. I mean, I'm just trying to say you, you were gonna allow it every other week. 
I nope. don't see it being. Nope. This is a discussion about the motion. This isn't about the outcome of a potential new hearing. So I'm, I'm strictly speaking only to the motion, which was, should we have another hearing? And I'm telling you why I don't think that it's our decision to make right now to have another hearing. It hasn't been asked of us. So you're asking for it, but I think that there's an, an, an I don't think you're completely unbiased. I guess I read the letter different than you did. I don't know. What? Does he, he needs to write another letter with the word specific, please give me another chance give me something, give me another public hearing to um, change this. I mean, that le that letter screamed that down the hallway. I mean, of course that's it, what that was. Of course, everyone can read and decipher what they want from a letter, but I think Natasha's just saying that it specifically was not written out that he has is asking us to reconsider or asking you to reconsider. Well, I think more importantly, Brian, you're asking us to reconsider. And so I think that there's a, I think there's the balance is a little bit out of whack on that front. Because I read the letter. I mean, I read the letter that said, please help. This is help. That's all I'm asking. He, he said in the letter specifically, all the downtown businesses should have the same chance, so on and so forth. Please help me. I mean, I don't know how else to say it unless you want him to be like he's in the court of law up against the, the judge and saying, may I please ask you for another public hearing to possibly amend the outcome, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I mean, I think we're splitting hairs. Yes, and we got to stop talking about this. Right. There needs to be, I don't know, it's just. So I asked to move to the vote whether or not, so the motion, just can you read the motion again? The just motion is on the floor to hold a public hearing to reconsider the previous vote on the entertainment license held by J.J. Savage. Helen, do you want, do you have input? Well, I don't know if I'm going to add more, and I, I know we're going all over the place with boundaries, but I, I was essentially thinking and was going to say the same thing that Asha did, that I don't feel that there's been a specific request, and I'm not saying it has to be with legalese. There, there was a reference to a petition that we didn't see. If, for example, he had said, I'm presenting to you this petition that's been signed by 100 people, I'm asking you to reconsider your, your vote on my entertainment license. I mean, that's as simple as that. Then I feel like we have an obligation to discuss or make a motion about are we going to reconsider it. And I'm in agreement with Natasha that that feels very different than one of us interpreting a letter because it can be interpreted in many ways and proactively essentially doing something that we didn't didn't direct it okay i mean i guess i see your point but i don't i mean i don't see that i'm interpreting anything he needs help he's asking for help so um discussion can be over i get your points so no no second there was a second um so then all in favor so let me just do a roll call. Um, Brian? Yes. Uh, Natasha? It, it was just muted. No. Did you hear me? Oh, no. Oh, no. And Helen? No. Okay. Okay. So he needs to formally address to ask that. Yeah, so now it's like, now I'm thinking it's like, you're going to go tell him that he needs to write this letter, and then he's going to send a letter, and then it's like, do we hold a special hearing to vote on whether or not to reconsider and then hold another special hearing? Like, I don't... That was my point. We couldn't just come right down to it. I mean, the guys... Well, that's no, where... because you didn't specifically come out and say that you're going to go to John and tell him that right after No, I, I, I didn't. Anybody, this is public. Anybody can get this and watch it wherever and however. I don't need to tell him. I guarantee you they do their homework. So. Well, yeah, okay. I'm not going to go wrong. I don't even know John on a personal level, to be quite honest. So. Okay, so I guess. I didn't know his name was John until somebody said it to me last meeting. I kept calling him JJ. I don't. <laughs> You know what I mean? So. Okay. Well, I think we should just let this rest because there is a. Yeah, vote. we are. Okay. We are. So, motion to adjourn.
Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.